this is Mr. G, and uh, welcome to Mr. G's house. We're going to chat a little bit about a fun little thing I love about music theory. And that's something called a tritone substitution. Uh, before we get started, uh, just know that the tritone substitution is a substitute chord that we use for a dominant 7 chord like this G7 you see here. By definition, the tritone sub, as it's often called, is another dominant 7 chord that is a flatted 5th higher, or a tritone, as it's called, than the reference chord. So the tritone sub for G7, G, it's a G, A, B, C, D, flat that, D flat. So it'll be a D flat 7 chord. Now, think about the tritone subs. They're cool. They're awesome. Um, but they're like that salt that you put in a soup or that special little magic thing that you put in your recipe. You don't use a lot of it. You don't use a little of it. You use too much, it ruins the soup. Or think about the tritone subchord as a strange little relative that every family has and every family has one. They're kind of cool to be around for a short period of time. They're kind of interesting for a short period of time, but you don't want too much of them. You don't want them living in the house with you, really. And you're really not comfortable if they're living in the same block. They need to be away from you for a while. But for short amounts of time, they're fun to be around. Might I point out that if you can't think of who that relative in your family is, be open to the fact that maybe you're that guy or gal. I am in my family. I'm just... I'm the weirdo in my family. I own it. I embrace my inner weirdness. So anyway, the tritone sub, we're going to use it, and we'll demonstrate it in a song called Amazing Grace, uh, is, is a chord that we can use in place of the G7. So let's go to, let's take a look at this a little closer. Here's your D flat 7. This is, this would be the tritone sub. You have a D flat, an F, an A flat, and a C flat. C flat. Are there C flats? Yeah, there's C flats. Uh, I could go into the music theory reason why we're calling it a C flat instead of a B, but I don't care if you were to call that C flat and just say, hey, that's a B. I'm good with it. Truth of the matter is, there is a reason we would write a C flat here. And the reason is quite simple. By definition, a dominant seven chord has a flatted seventh. For instance, a D flat major chord comes from a D flat major scale, which we've talked about. And the seventh note in the D flat major scale is a C natural. Well, if we're going to take that D flat major seven and turn it into a D flat dominant seven, we got to flat that seventh note, which makes a C natural a C flat. Yes, it sounds exactly like a B. And if you were to say, I want to call it a B instead of a C flat, I would not be disturbed. Uh, there's things, there's hills to fight on. I ain't going to fight on that one. So, but I'm just showed it here as a C flat because I do a lot of composing uh, for orchestras. Well, not a lot, some. And they would want to see a C flat and not a B natural. Make sense? Cool. Now, take a look at this. Here's a G7 and a D flat 7. We're going to compare them. The G7 has a G, B, D, F. The B is a third. And the F is the seventh, right? Well, in the D flat seven chord, the third is now the F. The F was the seventh in the G seven chord. It's now the third in the D flat seven. And the C flat, or the B, if you be so kind, is now the seventh on the D flat chord, where it was the third in the G7 chord. I revoiced the D flat 7 chord over here so you could see it and you notice I used a B here instead of a C flat. Might make it easier to see if we did this. Can you see how the two chords share these two very important notes? The third of the chord and the seventh, of, the flatted seventh of each chord. Just that the G7 and the D flat 7, the names of those notes are different. The third in the G7, the B becomes the seventh in D flat, etc., etc., etc. To quote Yul Brenner. Now, what makes this G7 to C 
the five chord to the one chord, such an important chord, is that the third degree of the G7 chord, the B, it's only half a step away from the root of the C chord. When you're doing voice leadings from one chord to the next, whatever chord you're in, whatever note of that chord is, it wants to move to the closest possible note in the next chord. Well, the B in the G7, that's really close to C. It's only half step away. It's drawn up to the C. The F in the G7 is drawn down to the E. Now, perhaps the best way to demonstrate how cool this sounds and the importance of it is for me just to play it for you. Here's a G7 chord. Now, this note, there's your seventh. It wants to come back to E. The B of the G7 chord wants to move up to C. So if I play just those two notes, do you hear that? That's what makes the G7 to C or the five to one such a final sounding like it's at the end of a song. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. Now the D flat seven, well, it has the same two notes, the B and the F, and they both want to do the same thing. The B and the D flat seven wants to go to the C, and the F and the D flat seven wants, still wants to go to the E of the C chord. So when moving from a G7 to C, the B, the third of the G7, wants to move to the C because, well, C is only half step away from that B. The F of the G7 chord wants to fall down to the E on the C chord because the E is only half step away from that F. Again, And the same two notes exist in the D-flat-7 chord. Only the third of the G7 is now the seventh, and the seventh of the G7 is now the third. <sighs> Who cares? F wants to go to E. B wants to go to C. Now, here's what it sounds like in a song. All right. Uh, I have to interject this. I've finished this video last night and went to bed, woke up this morning thinking, ah, there's something else I wanted to say here. And here's what I want to say here. This tritone substitution, in this case, the D flat dominant seven replacing the G seven. If you were to totally replace the G seven with the D flat seven, it can sometimes be a little jarring, especially if you're part of a world that doesn't have a lot of this kind of stuff happening in it like our bluegrass world, for instance. So to soften the impact of the D flat dominant seven, I use the G seven with it. In other words, I'm gonna to go to the G seven and then to the D flat seven and then to the C. The five chord, the G seven, to the tritone sub, D flat seven, and then the one chord, the C. And it softens the impact of that tritone sub and makes it sound a little bit more cool and a little bit less jarring. So let's give it a listen, see what you think. Amazing Grace in the key of C. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. See how that works? Now, again, the, the tritone sub is a cool chord. I could put it all in place. G, I have a G7 up there and the word me, right? That saved a wretch like me. I once died. You know, again, just a little bit. I like to use them on ballads. 
at the end of a ballad just to bring a song to a close. Uh, let's see, another hymn. Um, I come to the garden alone While the dew is still on the roses And the voice I hear falling on my ears Oh, the sun God discloses and he walks with me he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tear there none other has ever But do you see how it works? That tritone sub is a really cool little thing you throw in there. Don't do it a lot. Just a little. And I think that'll just add a little bit of spice to that song. All right. This is Mr. G. I am out of here. Bye-bye. <laughs>